you've already learned the active voice uh, for the present system. Uh, remember, the present system is the present imperfect and future indicative and the present and imperfect subjunctive. Uh, shorthand, this present system refers to all the tenses that are formed from the first two principal parts. Now we're going to move on to the passive voice of the present system for all conjugations. This may seem like a huge leap to be making. Uh, you, you took a while to learn the active voice for all four conjugations, but in reality, uh, the passive voice you'll find is very little other than changing the endings to the verbs. So what is the passive voice? Uh, the passive voice is a form of the verb in which the subject of the sentence is now going to be the recipient of the action. Right? So uh, we move from an active voice verb where, say, the boy calls the father, right? and so the, the verb calls says that the relationship between the, ver the subject, the boy, and the verb calls is that the boy is doing the action. To the passive voice, like the sentence, the father is called by his son, in which the subject, the father, is now the recipient of that action. And in English we often have to use some form of the verb to be uh, and a, a participle, called. So the father is called by his son is the passive voice. Or another example, the man admires those cars, active voice, the man is doing the admiring, to the passive voice, those cars are admired by the man, uh, in which the cars are the recipient of the admiration. And the reason you have the passive voice is so that you can change the emphasis of the sentence uh, from the doer to the thing being acted upon. So in the sentence, the father is called by his son, the father becomes the focus of the sentence or in the, pa in the sentence, those cars are admired by the man, the focus is on the cars, not by the man. Not on the man. So let's form the passive voice. Uh, like I said in the beginning, all you really need to do is learn a new set of endings. And those endings are are or or, if your uh, active voice tense ended with O in the first person singular, then we're just going to add an R instead. Uh, but if it was an M, We'll, we'll use an R, so R, Ris or Ray, uh, the second person singular, these two are interchangeable, you'll find both of them, Tour, Moor, Mini, Untour, so these passive endings, R, Ris, Tour, Moor, Mini, Untour, commit these to memory, they're in all of the tenses. And uh, just to compare the passive endings to the active endings, these should already be committed to memory. O, S, T, mustis, unt, or O, or M, S, T, mustis, unt. Now there are ris, tour, more, mini, untour. One thing to watch out. Uh, the, sing the second person singular, the ris, ray, ending, if added to a short I, so if your stem originally had a short I in it, uh, and, and I'll point out where those are, this I will shift uh, to an E. So just beware, this ending can sometimes do a, a little bit of uh, changing to your, to your stem, your tense marker. So let's take a look at how this would be used. So the present passive indicative, so present tense, passive voice, indicative. So I am called, you are called, he, she, it is called. Uh, we're going to take our present stem, woko, and just add R present stem, ris, present stem, tour, wokor, wokaris, or wokare, wokatur, wokamor, wokamini, wokantur. Uh, you may have some concern that you're not going to be able to distinguish this from the infinitive. Uh, context will help you out. So wokor, wokaris, wokatur, wokamor, wokamini, wokantur. And we can do the same thing with to have. Habeor, Haberis, Habetur, Habemor, Habemini, Habentur. Right, so the present passive indicative looks like it's going to be pretty easy. Uh, one to watch out for, though, is say the uh, present passive indicative of ago. 
And remember that warning I gave you about the short I. So in the present, uh, active indicative, ago, agis, agit, agimus, agitus, agunt, this I here, these I's are short. So when we shift to the passive, agor, agoris, right, or agare. And so this I, this initial I, is going to shift to an E. So agor, agoris, ah, but then it goes back to the I, agator, agamor, agimini, aguntor. So the lesson here, uh, the, the takeaway is that if you know how to conjugate a verb in the active voice, all you need to do is change the ending to get the passive voice. And this applies for the imperfect too. Uh, remember the imperfect, uh, here the example is copio, copra, kp, coptus, but this is work for any uh, imperfect tense. We're going to take our stem, our tense marker, eba, and if it were, if we were dealing with the first conjugation, the okaba, and then we just add our endings. So copie bar, copie baris, copie batur, copie bamor, copie bamani, copie bantur. And I'll just gloss over this, uh, but do keep in mind that this ris re is interchangeable. And if we were to do the first conjugation, wokabar, wokabaris, wokabatur, wokabamor, wokabamani, wokabantur. Right, so you know how to conjugate uh, in the imperfect, just change those endings. Change that MST, mustis unt, to ar ris tur, more mini untur. And the future. Uh, the future passive indicative is going to do the same thing. Uh, here the example is audio audire audiwi auditus, a fourth conjugation. This will also work for third conjugations. Just to review, this is the active voice here. I'll write that so that you don't think I'm fooling you. So, audiam, audies, audiet, audiemus, audietus, audient. Uh, and now you can probably guess, all we're going to be doing is changing these endings to our passive to get the future passives. And that's what we do. Audiar, audieris, audietur, audiemor, audiemini, audientur. Now watch out because with the first and second conjugation futures, bo, bis, bit, bimis, bitis, bunt, this I here is short, so when we add, when we change that to the wrist ray ending, we've got to change that I to an E. So wokabor, wokabaris, wokabare, wokabitur, wokabimur, wokabimini, wokabuntur. Right, so watch these short eyes. If in your active voice you had a short eye, it will become an E. So basic tips. The stems will stay the same as they were for the active voice, except for that short I to E before the R, and then really before the wrist ray ending. And then you memorize those new endings. R, wrist, tour, more, mini, untour. Now you might say, but you've skipped over the subjunctive. Uh, don't worry about the subjunctive. The subjunctive is going to follow these same rules. So if you know how to conjugate uh, in the present subjunctive, let's say we're going to do woko, wokare. So the subjunctive would be uh, wokem in the active to shift to passive. We're going to use the same stem to wokare. Uh, and if we want to do the imperfect subjunctive, remember you're just going to take the infinitive, wokare, and we're going to add our passive voice endings. Wokare, wokare ris, wokare retur, wokare tour. Right, so the rules for subjunctives are exactly the same as they were. Uh, we just changed those endings. So, like I promised in the beginning, conjugating in the passive voice is no more difficult than conjugating in the active voice. You just have new endings to memorize.